Renuka, all yours. Okay, thank you very much. So, good morning to everyone who has, who's here. Okay, I see you. I have about 11 attendees. Okay, so I, I thought it was a lot more, but never mind, maybe they will come along as we go along. Okay, um, before I start today, um, we want to just see in this, this uh, session for the next two hours, basically, we, I just want to share with you, okay, what have been doing and how are we going to increase our the level of difficulty of our questions, okay, to make it higher order thinking. Um, I'm not considering myself an expert here, okay, so it's more of a sharing session. And um, so if you feel that you need to... Um, Stop me anytime, please stop me, you know, or put up your hands and just say, Renu, can you please stop? I need to ask um, a question or whatever it is. OK, so uh, no formalities here. So if you want to chip in, please chip in. OK, so basically uh, this session is divided into three. OK, so the first one is just my experiences of how I embed hot into higher order thinking into my questions. Second one is how to actually uh, systematically prepare hots, okay? And thirdly is more of a sharing session. So I know that what I'm going to teach here or whatever I'm going to speak here or share with y'all, it might not be something that is very new with y'all and maybe you have been doing it. So it'll be good to share, okay? So I always like to share because I believe that all of us are unique. So whether it's my students or my colleagues, I think it's, it's good and it's nice to share things, okay? So before I start, um, anybody wants to ask me any questions before I start? No. Yes. Go ahead. Here's, okay. Sri Lee, is it? Yes, that's me. Yeah, I haven't got any question at the moment. So yeah, you're welcome to oh. start. Okay. Looking forward okay, to then. see what you can. Uh, yeah, you are going to share. Yes. Okay. okay. OK, so the first thing is, OK, I'm going to bring back the reflection at the beginning of the of this session because um, so as we discuss, oh, as I show your my slides to you all and all that, OK, please reflect on one question or task that you have prepared, OK, maybe in the past, OK, and by coming or by listening or by sharing whatever we are saying in this two hours, think about how you want to make adjustments to upgrade that question or task. OK, and if you feel that you have been doing what this, this sharing section discussed about, OK, so please do share your experience with us. So please keep these two things, uh, this, this, this reflection in your mind as we are discussing, because I think at the end of it, it'll be really good if you can share and let us know how you feel that you're going to upgrade your, your, your questions. OK, OK. Uh, who doesn't know what is? formative assessment. Does everyone know what is formative assessment? Anyone who doesn't know? OK, um, Umu knows me well, so she gave me the list of participants. So if it's OK, I'm going to call you out. OK, otherwise it's going to be one way. OK, so um, if you if you notice, I have a, a, a one with all your names here, so I'm going to pick blindly one. Uh, Xiaoli? Lao Xiao Li. I think she's not here. Is anyone Lao Xiao Li? No. Uh, Norol Huda? Bin Abdul Jabba? No, not in. It's okay. If you're here and you don't want to answer, so you just keep quiet. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> Anybody who wants to answer me? Uh, Norol Huda bin Johari? Not here. Uh, no Atira. Okay, nobody wants to answer. Okay. Yes. So, oh, okay. Atira, do you know about formative assessment? Uh, you are uh, uh, a little bit. Okay. What 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 does formative assessment mean to you, or for your students? You are uh, you are muted. Uh, 
Atira? Okay. I think Atira is too shy. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So actually, um, Okay, when why do we teach is now formative assessment. Okay, we consider assessment now as part of teaching and learning. Okay, so we don't just teach and then at the end of it, we just assess them. We are going to do assessment. We are going to give this higher order thinking skills while we are teaching them. So it is important to know why we are teaching. Okay, uh, thanks Shubha. She's given me a reply, which is uh, I, I cannot see here. Umu, what's the uh uh Shubha, do you want to 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 let me know? Uh maybe I can just give because you were asking, nobody answered. Formative okay. assessment is it or uh, normally uh is done at the end of the class to to un to see whether the students actually understood the lesson of the day. And therefore, uh they we are asking them indirectly to reflect on their learning uh of that day's lesson. I don't know whether the, that reflects uh, formative assessment, but it is indirectly forcing them to understand what they learn at the end of the class. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So we don't we don't teach 10 topics and later we assess them and say, oh, they didn't understand topic one. So immediately we are asking them questions. So when we set questions, we must make sure that the question actually reflects what we are teaching. Yeah, so what Shubha is done is exactly true in the sense that uh, we want to to modify our teaching or modify our lectures if we find that students are struggling with what we want them to learn. OK, so uh, the important thing is why we teach is for the first thing is for transfer. OK, transfer means what we teach them in the classroom. We want them to be able to use it when they go off into the real world, but we cannot assume that just because we taught them and when they reach their real world, when they become engineers or doctors or lawyers, they are able to transfer that knowledge you have. So you have to prepare tasks that mimics real world situation. And if they are able to do it, then we know, ah, OK, my work is done here. So the first thing is to prepare students for transfer. OK, that means the ability to apply learning to new situations. OK, so that means if you teach in the classroom in one context, if, it's if they are able to transfer it into a new context, that means you know that, ah, OK, my students have truly understood what I taught them. So it's not if you set questions like define or list down something, those things do not require any strategic thinking because they just have to memorize it and, and, and vomit it out. OK, I tell my students, vomit out your answers. OK, and for me, OK, I'm just I'm just putting this as a, a to contextualize why I need you all to. I mean, this is the foundation lah, for why we want to prepare hot question. And the second thing is for us to accomplish this. OK, this ability to transfer. OK, we need to have hot questions and that can be done using performance tasks and projects. OK, I, I just want to highlight these two things because it, these two things really help me a lot in understanding. OK, am I doing a project? Am I doing a performance task? Because when I go through and I see a lot of teachers, you know, they say, oh, I did a project and their project was just one week. And then there are some teachers who say, oh, I did a project, but their project was six weeks. So what was the difference there, you know, in that sense? So just to let you, I'm just going to let you know what is the performance task and what is project so that you know when you prepare higher order thinking skills, are you doing it for a performance task or are you doing it for a project? OK, OK, let's look at transfer. OK, so if you want to prepare a task, OK, that requires or students will acquire the skill of transfer, that task must be long term. OK, long term means um, you you uh, it doesn't mean like it has to be 10 weeks or whatever. It could be just a week. OK, but um, the depth of it is there. OK, meaning that it has to be performance based. That means it requires application, not just recall. So again, not define list and all that. And more, it will be better if it is to a new situation, not to the situation that you taught them in class. OK, and their thinking shouldn't be lateral, just one way of thinking. It, the task must ask them to think in a few different ways called strategic thinking, OK, or uh, where they need to plug information from a network of, of, of data or whatever it is to come up with 
their answer. Okay. Importantly, also, you shouldn't be there telling them what to do all the way. So there must be some sort of independent learning, which I think many of us do that. Okay, we give them a project and we tell them go and do it. But of course, we must also give them support. And the other important thing that many of us forget is we give them a task and then we just collect the task at the end of it. In between those tasks, as they are progressing with the task, many of us forget to help our students to, to develop these habits of mind. That means, uh, you know, if, if they, they came to a dead end, how to motivate themselves to go on, to look for another solution, or the other words is to ask good questions, intelligent questions, okay? So they must build this uh, culture of asking questions. So of course, that will, that will be in another pathway of how you develop your classroom environment. But these are things that you must make sure that your task has, okay? It doesn't matter whether it is a assignment or a final exam. OK, I'll show you later. OK, the other thing is performance tasks and project. OK, many of us prepare tasks, OK, tasks which are demanding and challenging. And we consider that as a project. OK, but there is a slight difference. I'm not saying performance task is worst off or project based learning is better or whatever it is. Those these are two different things that you actually can do when we're talking about higher order thinking. OK, but it's just that uh, when we do performance tasks, it's normally shorter in duration. OK, it normally focuses on a single subject. There is a, some sort of structure there. OK. And it may or may not be set in authentic context. So the, the task is challenging, but it is something that they, you know, it's something that you just ask them a question. It's not like in a real world setting or whatever it is. And then it may or may not have a real audience. Okay. Or uh, and if project-based learning, I think many of us know what's project-based learning. Okay, it's open-ended, it's genuine uh, issues or problems, and it's targeted to real audience and largely student directed. Okay. Sometimes in our coursework, you know, you do a project, you ask students to present. OK, when you ask students to present, you can actually make them present to a real world audience. Say if you are uh, uh, teaching them biology, OK, you can actually get a biologist, one of your friends to come into the class and say, OK, let me evaluate your, 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 your presentation. Let me give you some feedback. OK, so those people that come into the class is called your audience. So like for me, I teach I'm in the education faculty and I teach courses where I prepare students to be teachers. OK, so definitely my course will have uh, where they need to do stimulation of how to be in a classroom to teach micro teaching. We call it micro teaching. And when they do their micro teaching, those days when my kids were younger, when they were form four, form five, I used to bring them into my class with some of their friends, two or three friends, and they will sit at the back. Okay, I'll give them a rubric, simple rubric, and they are supposed to evaluate these students from, you know, when they do their micro teaching. And I tell my students, okay, these are your clients. So if they are happy, then you could be happy too. So when we talk about audience, real audience, it doesn't have to be someone from the ministry or whatever it is. It could be just your friends, somebody around to give the students when they present, oh, there is an uh, outsider here. OK, so my presentation uh, and what is the outsider going to say about my presentation? So you can, you know, with your colleagues, I mean, not take from the same university because they might be the same lecturers teaching them, but maybe from another university, if they don't mind. Now when we have Zoom and all that and, and you know, they can just come online and see it. OK, so. Just don't think of the task itself, but also how you want to run that higher order thinking task. OK. OK, then we always talk about real life situations. We must put our tasks in real life situation. It must be connected to real world. Yes, that is what we call authentic assessment. OK, but beyond real world, I think the most important thing that many of I think us, I mean, including me is we do not connect our tasks or the, the, the thing that we want our students to do with what interests them 
or what is the current issues now that will will attract that okay so the experiences and interests of students things that they would see as relevant or exciting is very very important okay so it's just not connecting it to the real world but also trying to put into your tasks okay things that are relevant to students because if they want to know oh yeah i'm interested in this and i want to know more about it then they will they will invest that time to do your task okay 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 so this this slide is a bit more different because uh, i normally give this for my students okay when you want to prepare hot questions that means higher order thinking questions okay there are some tips First of all, look at various examination boards. Okay, I mean, in, if school teachers, I'll ask them to look at various examination boards. So if you are teaching Form 5, just don't look at SPM, pass your questions. Look at O levels, the various O levels, uh, pass your papers. Try to analyze those questions and see how are they different from your question compared to the questions that accept them. Same thing here also. If you are teaching, uh, let's say you are teaching law, how is the questions that you set in your final exam different or similar from those um, who are in who are in in another university in in an overseas university okay or even the questions let's say for certification you know like in i mean in malaysia we don't have for teacher certification but overseas they have if you want to become a teacher you need to go through some certification courses so there are questions there so you have to look at those questions because those questions could you know I mean, I'm not asking you to, to cut and paste them, but just to analyze those questions and see how you can modify your questions to either suit it or, um, or make it um, more upbeat. Lah. Okay, and then try to connect questions to real world situations. So when we talk about real world situation, it's just not oh, connecting it to, oh, it's a factory or whatever it is, but make sure that your students are also interested in that topic. OK, so real world situations, if it's in UK, the situation might be different here. If it might be different. OK, and also try modify modifying questions instead of creating them when you are at novice level. So that means if you are starting out, OK, this is I'm talking from experience is that if you are starting out, don't straight away be ambitious, and say, oh, OK, I'm going to start off a question with a blank sheet. I'm going to write my own question because when it's open ended or when it's hot, uh, sometimes you you misinterpret the question. The question is very vague or the question has, you know, you see the question from one lens. Suddenly you realize, hey, actually there are other lenses that the students can see and the way they are answering it is actually correct. So uh, and, and if they are looking from that lenses, then your learning goal is actually, uh, what is it, misaligned. OK, so what I suggest you do is look at questions and then try to modify those questions. When I mean modify the questions is like not simply say like, OK, this question has uh, Susan and Peter went to the market and you just change it to Ali and Akau went to the market. So you say, oh, I've changed it. I've modified the names. No, the, the question itself, try to modify it in the sense that, OK, if it's an objective questions, which statement is true? So now you try to modify it to say, OK, which statement is untrue and then change A, B, C, D for that. OK, so that means you try to create questions, OK, by modifying existing questions which you know are uh, established. Lah. That means there's already been validated and it's um, it's validity. OK, OK. If you look at this one, I don't know whether you can see it or not. OK, because uh, for me it's very small. I don't know about the rest. OK, if you look at this question, this is just an uh, S, uh, SPM question, OK, a chemistry question. And if you look at the words there, okay, if you look at the words there, uh, can you all see it? Can you all see those words? Or those questions? Uh, we can't see. Huh? We, are no. we can't see. Your, your reflection no. slide. This, it's still in the reflection slide. Yeah, reflection meaning? The the title of your slide is reflection. And then now, why are we teaching characteristic of transfer oh. goals? You mean my one hasn't moved? Uh, now it's at characteristic of transfer goals. Uh, Umu, mine is not moving, Umu. 
uh, can, can you uh, go to the screen where you can see the people? Your okay, team. you are in transfer. All right, you can just move your slide there. Now, can you see? Hey, no, it's still there. Okay, now can you see this? Mm. Uh, what, what page are you on actually? Now, page five. Okay, page I think five. They didn't see all this. Okay, I think they didn't see all this. If I go back to page four, okay, so you saw this transfer goals, okay? So uh, when we want to create higher order thinking, so let me know uh, when I'm trying to move the slides, okay? When uh, now, the, now it's at concept of authenticity. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, uh, I no. think everyone can move their screen no. by themselves. So, oh, Dr. Okay. Renuka, what, uh, what page are you on right now? Okay, page let four? me see. There's a button uh, to show where the presenter is at. Yeah. Okay. I am in page eight. Eight. Alright, Dr. Renuka, uh, can uh, I confirm uh, with you? Okay. You are moving your screen on the Teams or on the slide on your computer? On the Teams. On the team, okay. Yeah, yeah, Nana, Nana, Nana. All right. Can you try to move your screen now, Brother Renuka? Is it moving to the next? No, but it's still no. showing slide eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh page eight right now. Yeah, I'm trying to put nine, but it's still eight. Uh, maybe you can just uh, I'll try to help you navigate. Okay, so oh, no. now I'm in yeah. page eight. So all of us in page eight. Do you want me to go back just to show you the slides? Or is that okay? Those were ketinggalan zaman. Are you all okay with follow you. Okay, so you just follow us. So now I'm in page eight, okay? So this is an SPM question, okay? And if you look at that question, it, it is very technical. OK, and if you look at the words there, you see uh, Lightberg condenser. You look about the mixture in the water bath. You look about reactions. You look about chemical equations. So all the questions are very, uh, they have got the jargon that is associated with the laboratory only. OK, but the next slide, uh, Umu, next slide. OK, now it's not moving for me. Uh, it's not moving for me. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, hold on. Let, let me try share it again. Okay, can you okay. hold on for a while? Dr. Renuka, can you navigate? Uh, it, it hasn't come up yet for me. Okay, uh, okay. Right. let me see. Uh, uh, no, I cannot. Okay. But now it's moving for you? Uh, slower than the, the, yeah, it's moving, but much slower. Should I, should I just, uh, do it, uh, share it from my, from my end? Sure, sure, sure. So I cannot see the comments and all, it's okay, right? Yeah, maybe you, you can just, just um, like break for five minutes and see the question. <laughs> okay. Okay. Later. Yeah. We're sorry okay, for so the technical I'm, issues. <laughs> okay. So I'm. I, should I share or you unshare? I share? Uh, yes, sure. Okay. Can everyone see? 
Yes. Yes. Okay, so just going back, just rushing through again. Okay, so like I told you earlier, please think about a task that you are you feel very uh, passionate about and see whether after going through this sharing session, is there anything that you, you feel that you can uh, you can adjust, do some adjustment? But if you feel that what you're doing is just exactly what I'm saying, which is I don't think is unusual, uh, please share your experience. OK, why do we teach? OK, because if you understand why we teach, then we will we will try our best to create exam questions that mimic our teaching philosophy. So if we want to prepare students for transfer, meaning that whatever we teach them today in the classroom, they are able to use it when they go out. OK, and the one way of finding out whether they can do it is through our tasks. OK, and there are two types, which is performance tasks and projects that can actually help to do this. OK, and you can also see how you can modify your exam questions to suit that. OK, so now everybody's looking at characteristics of transfer goals. Can somebody right. say yes? Yes, yes, right. yes. OK, yes, yes. good, good. So if you want to consider, if you want to teach because you want students to be able to transfer their knowledge or their skills or whatever into, into new situations, you must have tasks which is long term. OK, must be students must be able to apply their knowledge. It must be into a new context. OK, it requires strategic thinking. That means just not thinking laterally, but, you know, in a network of thoughts and ideas. And then you need to make sure that students are independent. Students are given choice when they are doing the task. OK, but with enough support. And lastly, many of us forget that sometimes when we do this project, we forget about teaching them about the habits of mind. OK, habits of mind is where, you know, when you, you hit a failure while you're doing the project or one road closes, how do they pick themselves up and look for another solution? How do they learn to ask good questions? These are things that you need to teach them as they are doing their project in the higher order thinking skills. OK, so just to tell you just now not to get confused between performance tasks and project, because sometimes it's just two, one, one week you do in three hours and you say, oh, I did a project with them. And then some of us take three or four weeks to do a project. So sometimes we are actually doing a performance task, which is also considered higher order thinking, but it is in a smaller scale. OK, and if it's a project, there are characteristics. OK, so if you create a task, which is actually long term, does your task involve interdisciplinary? OK, for example, I saw one question. This is a school teacher who wanted to ask his students, OK, because behind the school there was a river flowing and some of the students go there and swim. So but he wanted to he asked his students, do you think that the river is actually safe? Yeah, I know you're swimming there, but is it actually safe or not? So some students came up and say, OK, I'm going to check their pH. OK, so if you're going to check the pH, yes, then you need to discuss with them. Where are you going to put your pH meter? Is it at the edge or is it in the in the center or is it in the middle? Where, which which level? Where are you going to check the pH? OK, and what time of the day you're going to check the pH because the pH might change during the day. So those are discussions the students do. Then they carry out the experiment and then they can come to a conclusion. Another group might say, hey, if I want to know whether the river at the back of the school is safe or not, I might want to look at the the organisms that are living there, if I have poisonous uh, insects or anything down there, then the river might not be safe for me to see. So these students will actually go in and take pictures of animals, look through the uh, data, you know, or the, the, the one the, to check what animals are or insects are those and then see the characteristics of it, whether it's safe or not. So that involves biology already. OK, so it is interdisciplinary. So it's more like a project and it might take longer time because the teacher, each of the group will have different. Uh, um, uh, what's it uh, tasks that they are doing, but all coming to the same conclusion, I mean, or the same results. Is the river safe to swim in or not? OK, so this is what I'm trying to talk about. But sometimes we just want to do a performance task, which is challenging, but it is in a smaller case or smaller scale compared to project problem based, uh, project based learning. So just keep in mind that there is a performance task okay, and that is a uh, project based learning. That is that it doesn't mean the performance task is is a lower extent or lower level compared to one. But 
sometimes uh, just for you to know. OK, uh, and then I talk about authentic. OK, so we always try to connect to real world situation, but we always forget to connect it to real world situation and it must be something that the students are interested in. That means they are they see it relevant. They want to know what is the outcome. OK, so these are the few questions that I told you connect it to real world. OK, so we stopped here. So everybody is seeing an SPM question. OK, if you look at this question, OK, I'm just showing an example. Sometimes when we analyze questions, we see that, OK, if you look at this question is an apparatus set up for preparation and then uh, condenser liber, uh, water bath, uh, reaction, chemical equation. So if a person who is not a chemistry major may not you know, or might, might look at this as something like, oh, it's away from me. I, I, it's only, it's the question is set in the laboratory kind of aspect. Okay. Whereas this question, okay, is another example I'm giving, which is an O level questions. You straight away see some sort of interdisciplinary, okay, like glucose can be used as a source of ethanol. And we know that glucose is very often used in biology. And then we see the word fuel. OK, and then we see um, fuel, we see the word industry. So students, when they look at it, they say, oh, OK, this is actually done in the industry, which is actually kind of uh, important to me to know because I might one day go and work in the industry. So if you look at the two questions, when, that's what I'm trying to say. When you analyze the questions, try to see, oh, OK, how are they connecting it to the real world? OK, or it doesn't have to be something that is so great. Okay? I'll show you later. OK, um, I forgot to wish all my Muslim colleagues here Selamat Berpuasa. And I also want to say that I'm sorry, but most of the example I'm going to give you is with regards to food. OK, because OK, I think if uh, if you all attended the open book assessment by uh, Prof Aziz, if I'm not mistaken, he said that for you to create open book assessments, which is considered higher order thinking, OK, questions, you need to be a subject expert. OK, if you're not a subject expert, it's going to be a bit more difficult. It's very difficult for you to look at a question if you're not a subject expert and say, oh, yeah, this is higher order. OK, so the thing that can bring all of us from different faculties and different uh, background is, I think, food. OK, so let's say now you, you are teaching nutrition, OK, a balanced diet OK, and all that. And you want to set this question in your exam. There is a boy in your class who is underweight. Prepare a balanced diet for breakfast, lunch, dinner for this boy. OK, uh, is this question higher order or not? Anybody wants to answer? Please answer yes. straight away because uh -huh. I cannot you know, see. Yes. Yes, OK. And, and why do you say it's higher order? Because the student needs to design and uh, create a balanced diet. OK, so that means they have to learn about balanced diet and 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 also to create for breakfast. OK, uh, what kind of I mean, you're not going to you're going you're not going to eat chicken curry at breakfast. OK, so how you're going to give energy for breakfast because you need that food or whatever the nutrition to carry you out throughout the day. And you know, as you go for dinner, yes, you need a balanced diet, but they say eat like a pauper. So they need to apply the knowledge that they have learned before and bring it over. So there is some sort of application there, okay? I'm not saying that this question is, I mean, I'm not saying it's not higher order. Yes, it's higher order. Like, I don't know who said it, okay? But someone said, yes, it's higher order. But, you know, nowadays with technology and, and, and all those things, if I just write down, click, prepare a balanced diet for breakfast, lunch, dinner for an underweight boy, I will straight away get a lot of different, different menu. OK, and I can just cut and paste and put it in. OK, or even when if I'm learning, I'm, when I'm learning for it, it's, it's so it's so generic that I can actually I can just prepare a, a diet and I can use it in any situation. But if you want to up it a bit, and say, OK, I want to make it a little bit more challenging for my students. OK, you don't have to don't have to tear apart this question and, and shred it and all that. You just add in a little bit more of barriers. Okay, I call it barriers. I don't know what people call it. OK, there is a boy in your class who is underweight. You learned that this boy comes from a lower socioeconomic background and single parent household. 
you also know that his family does not own a fridge. Prepare a balanced diet for lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner for this boy. It is a bit more challenging now because if you talk about a balanced diet for the first one, if they put cheese for breakfast, well, it's good. Cheese is a good source of energy or whatever it is. But now you realize that he's from a lower socioeconomic background, so the students might not be able to choose cheese. And secondly, the family does not own a fridge. So they need to think, okay, how can I prepare a, a balanced diet for this boy? Okay. Similarly, also they can say, oh, okay, I want you to eat fish for lunch. But then you must also remember, okay, so the parent has to go and buy the fish, okay, and store it, okay, in the fridge. But they don't have a fridge. And if it was a normal, you know, two, two parent household, then it's okay. You can say, oh, the mother can go to the market every day and buy the fish. But now they have to think, okay, how can I have this boy have protein? Single parent, single uh, parent household. So parent will definitely have to be working. Okay. So there's a lot of thinking going on to create a menu for a child. Okay. And I also believe, okay, it's so easy to prepare a question, but do not overwhelm the students with your answer. So if in this kind, in this case, once you put in all the social economic background, maybe you just want the students to prepare a balanced diet for lunch. You know, instead of breakfast, lunch, dinner, maybe just for lunch, especially if you want the students to answer this question in, let's say, one hour. If it's a project, okay, I mean, I mean, if it's an assignment task where you're going to give them two weeks or three weeks or four weeks, then fine. So for it to be higher order thinking, you must also assume the duration you want them to do the task. Because if you force them to do something which is too much overwhelming, they are definitely just going to cut and paste. Okay, so there's a lot of things to consider when you're creating higher order thinking. So the first thing is, if you have a question there already, try to modify it. Try to think, okay, how can I challenge the students to, to think a little bit more deeply about it? Okay, so this is one way of doing it. Okay? Uh, Dr. Renika. Yes. Uh, sorry, yes. the previous slide. Uh, because you were saying that the student can Google it, right? And I think some some were saying about chat GPT, right? Yes. But if we prepare this question for a final exam, physical final exam, okay. the student has no access to Google or chat GPT. Yes. So it doesn't really apply there for, uh, I mean, this one still apply, meaning that the, the argument that the student can just go to chat GPT doesn't apply to physical final exam. Okay, the other thing is, I just want to find, just to let you know, because I always try to challenge my students. So, of course, let's say if you are a good student, okay, and you are learning this topic on nutrition, you can already guess that your lecturer is going to ask you a question about balanced diet. So, what you're going to do is, you are going to prepare notes about balanced diet, breakfast, lunch, dinner, okay, I want to see, a, uh, you know, a balanced diet. Whereas, where, so, I mean, you study and you come in for that. And then you just like, okay, download the whole information. But if you give them with that element of surprise there, okay, like, oh, the boy, I mean, they will not think about it. Like, oh, okay, now my lecturer is putting in social economic background, single parenthood and all that. It's nothing new. Okay, it's nothing that is not, it's not like it's uh, something out of the blue. I mean, they can still understand the question, but now there's just some little bit more challenges. So they have to think a bit more deeply. So that is the fundamental of, um, of higher order thinking. You know, I'm not saying that the first question, yeah, I agree with you. That's why I didn't say the first question is not hot. It is a hot question. But if I am a good student, I would definitely prepare notes and all that about this. So when I come to exam and I see, oh, okay, prepare a balanced diet, I just da -da 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 -da. But if you want your questions to be slightly challenging, then the second part would be a better one. Because students will come with the information of a balanced diet, but now they have to think, okay, can I write this down? Can I put cheese? Okay, why can I not put cheese? You know, so if you if you continue your question, you could justify your answer, then they can say, oh, okay, the student will have to eat this because da, 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 they don't have fridge or uh, something, something like that. So it is not a matter, of, I'm just saying, if you want to up your, your questions, Okay, it's not that I'm saying question. The first one is, oh, it's not higher order. Oh, it's not uh, what it's just that the way students are learning nowadays, they have so many information. So if you really want to pick 
out good students, students who are actually thinking strategically, then the second question will come in more important. Otherwise, you will find that your students' marks are all very linear, all getting 60, 65, 60, 62, 63. Of course, one or two will fall off lah, and one or two extremely good. But you will not be able to differentiate those who are actually having this strategic thinking, who are actually able to transfer that knowledge into your, your one. Uh, I don't know who was it just now who was, I was talking uh -huh. to. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So uh, do you see what I'm, where, from where I'm coming from or not? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, anybody wants to ask any question? Umu, is there any questions? Oh, I don't know where is Umu. Okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, Anza is asking, is it sufficient to ask if ChatGPT can do it to decide this? I think Prof. Renuka yeah, has already answered that. Dr. Renuka already addressed this. So yeah, don't worry. Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask the, the next question. I'm going to show you the next question. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's say now, okay. Technically, technically, okay. Or the or before uh, chat GPT came into the scenes, when we ask a question, why or how? So if you start your question with why, da, 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 or how, da, 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 it's already considered a higher order thinking question. OK, so let's say if I'm teaching photosynthesis, OK, if I'm teaching photosynthesis and I ask this question, why is photosynthesis important? OK, technically, this is a higher order thinking question. OK, but let's say now I put it into my chat GPT. OK, and just let I just want to let you know that I am not technology savvy, so there might be other tools there that I'm not sure of. But let's say I'm just using chat GPT. OK, and it will give you a beautiful answer. OK, if you look at that one, it says, oh, OK, it explains what is photosynthesis in the first line. And then it says it's so crucial. Then the second line, it tells us that the importance of it, first of all, is crucial. Second of all, it actually produces oxygen that we need to breathe. And then thirdly, it talks about, you know, it's it's the fun foundation of food chain. And therefore, we have biodiversity and all that. A perfect answer which I think you should probably, I don't know, I'm not a uh, 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 um, biologist, but I think it's almost a perfect answer, okay? Again, okay, um, if you are teaching photosynthesis, if I'm a good student, I would definitely say, uh, my lecturer will ask me this question, my lecturer will ask me this question, we learned about why photosynthesis is important, so I just memorize this, if the question comes out, I just pop, pop, give the answer. So, maybe we can try to modify it slightly, okay? For example, let's try to make it hot, okay? A student wanted to know why photosynthesis is important. The student asked chat GPT the question and the following answer was obtained. Put this information into an infographic for a primary school science exhibition. So, they are still going to, so, uh, I mean, here is where I can, I want to get some arguments from y'all, okay? Instead of me setting a question asking, why is photosynthesis important, even, even if it's in a physical class, okay? Even if it's in a physical examination where the student is sitting in the examination hall, as opposed to this question. A student wanted to know why photosynthesis is important. The student asked, so you give the chat GPT answer at the at the bottom, and then uh, put this information into an infographic for a primary school science exhibition. Anybody who wants to challenge me <laughs> or think that this is not a higher order, or you think this is a higher order, um, anybody? Yeah, I think it's higher order. Anybody else who, who wants to challenge this? Rosaida Po, are you around? I can't see whether you all are there or not. Um, Farid? Farid, ada tak Farid? Ada, ada. Ah, Farid, you want to challenge or not? High order or not high order? Um, yeah, I would say so. Because like uh, the the student would need to go on and sort of like uh, I mean make sense out of those uh, infographic 
and 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 yeah, I mean, yeah, because like it's infographic, and sometimes people might uh have sort of like different interpretation to an infographic. So I mean, by being able to put it in uh by yeah, he, he or she needs to go on and uh, make sense out of those infographics. So yeah, I would say so. Yes. Okay. Compared to I mean, compared to this one lah. Hey, sorry. Uh, so this one is just an essay. So if you ask this question, now you give the answer as well. So students must be able to pick out what are the most important information that the, the, the essay is telling you and putting it in an info in, in into an infographic. So infographic is basically trying to think, OK, how can I put this information which is so wordy into point form that makes students to understand? It is a very high order thing question, higher thinking, uh, higher order thinking question. That's why we have our PhD three minutes thesis. Try to condense what you have into an information that is useful and um, and also complete or accurate. OK, so there are ways that we can try. And when I put this into chat GPT and this is what I got. OK, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's other tools, but this is what I got. OK, so I, I don't I, I don't have the ability to create. Uh, is there any any other things that can able to create? I'm sure there is, right? Because I told you I'm not good with this. OK, I do. I do. I do. Other to, to what infographic? Huh? OK, so I mean, if there is from that information, you put that information in and ask them to prepare infographics. It's a bit more difficult. OK, so it's a bit more challenging. OK, and but if you ask uh, chat GPT, they do suggest they do suggest some of the important online tools. So if the students don't know how to do it, at least they know, OK, they're getting information. It's not wrong to get information when you have higher order thinking skills. OK, so this is what the answer I got. Lah. OK, this, he said, oh, I'm not good at doing uh, this, but you can get this information from this. So students might not be able to copy lah. or a bit more difficult. I'm not saying they cannot. It's a bit more challenging for them. to. OK, OK, so same thing also. If you look at high order thinking, you don't have to change your questions much. If you look at it, what changes can you make to a prototype to improve performance? This is a very generic term. Same thing like earlier also. OK, give me a balanced diet. When you put like that, it's very generic. Information is all over the place. So what changes would you make the prototype to improve its performance? There are already frameworks. OK, look at the structure, look at the cost, look at the one. So students just have to remember those and just write it out. But if you just change your wordings a bit, like explain what changes you will make to your prototype and how each change will improve the performance of your prototype. Or in case you have an exam question, you put you draw a prototype there and say, OK, based on this prototype, what uh, what changes would you make? So now the students will have to focus on that and try to write out, OK, what do they think? How can they improve the prototype? So instead of using generic questions, OK, which is higher order, I'm not saying it's not higher order. We want to challenge our students by changing the words. You know, so that means you, you show a picture or you show something there and say, OK, based on this, how would you improve this prototype? So now the students don't they just don't have to write blindly. Oh, uh, the stability or stability of the one must be equal to. Da, 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 da. Now they have to look at the prototype. OK, what can I say about the stability? What how can I improve the stability of this prototype? So the thinking becomes slightly higher level. OK. OK. I'm just going to share one of my experience with you. OK. When I'm walking around, when I'm looking, setting for exam questions or whatever it is, I try to look for these scenar real life scenarios. OK. I teach third year students to do micro teaching. So micro teaching is where I mean, one of the learning outcome is micro teaching. So if you are going to ask them to you know, exam question, it will I will probably ask them, OK, prepare a lesson plan based on this topic. OK, or prepare a lesson plan. I want to make it open ended. Prepare a lesson plan on a rate of reaction. All the students will prepare one, the simplest to teach. OK, so it, it sometimes defies the purpose. Or if I say, OK, 
prepare uh, on the topic of of thermodynamics you can see they will all choose a certain uh, way or one and they will and they will just write it out you know cut and paste cut and paste and write it out so what i did was i the final year students they will go for their practicum so when they go for their practicum call it latihan mengajar so i will go to the schools as a supervisor and see so when they when i go and see them and observe them they have to give me a lesson plan and then i'll observe their their teaching okay and see how well they they uh, execute their lesson plan okay so this when i went for one of these classes i saw one of the students lesson plan okay it was quite good he he performed it quite well so i say okay i'm going to use your lesson plan for my next exam questions okay so asked him permission he said okay you can use whatever you want so this is what i i changed the question i said uh, appendix 2 shows a lesson plan created by teacher A to teach the learning outcomes as mentioned in the learning outcomes. Okay, this one is a bit wrong here. Teacher A has misplaced her PowerPoint slides for part one, homologous series. She knows that there were 12 slides. Based on the lesson plan, could you create a PowerPoint presentation, 12 slides, so you only have, can have 12 slides, to implement the lesson for part one. Okay, so this is what was in the appendix. So I gave the lesson plan, Blah, 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 everything that they, what was the learning one and how the teacher planned to carry out. Okay, so the teacher will start the class discussion on using and present the organic compounds in every day. The slides will contain some examples. It is, it is there, but yet it's not there. So within five slides, you need to show all this. Okay, so a discussion about the presence of organic compound in every day. So you need to show something about organic, but you can choose whatever you want. And then from slide six to 11, OK, the teacher will move on discussion of homologous series. Uh, so here is where they actually start off with the homologous series. So you you know what's a homologous series, but you must prepare it within six slides. Is it six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? Yeah, within six slides. So how are you going to show? What are you going to put in those slides? And then the last one is OK, uh, to self-assess. So what kind of self-assessment do you think you want to put on that slide for asking students to self-assess? OK, so this was one of the questions I gave, I think, in 2021, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And the students had one week to do it because I didn't believe that they could copy it from anywhere because it's so specific. And yet it's challenging because when you prepare those 12 slides, there must be a flow. You must do it within three minutes. The other one, you must do it within 10 minutes. So there's a lot of thinking going on as they are preparing the slides. So. Uh, and I know they cannot find it anywhere. Maybe they can Google and find it, but it, it's from a real world situation because this, they will be going next year to do their practicum and they will be teaching some of these topics. OK, so. That was that. OK, let's look at uh, Bloom's taxonomy. I think everyone knows about Bloom's taxonomy. OK, Bloom's taxonomy helps us to create higher order thinking questions. OK, and some of us say after once you can do application is considered higher order, uh, higher order. Sorry. So, you know, and use words like, OK, design. So if I use a word like design in my question or well, I am actually higher order thinking. And if I use words like um, define, OK, then I know it's a lower order question, which is actually a very good tool. I mean, a taxonomy. So at least you can gauge. OK, uh, is my question higher order or, or what? OK. So, but I just want you to just look at one. Huh? You look at this word understand. One of the words that they use is select. Okay, I'm going to set a question based on select. Okay, and sorry again, nutrition. <laughs> okay, select the three most healthy dishes. I put a picture. I ask my students after teaching them about nutrition, select the three most healthy dishes. Just and justify your answer. Okay, so if you are looking at Bloom's taxonomy, you will say, "Yo, I use the word select. Select is lower order." But when you look at this question, asking students to select the three most healthy dishes compared in compared out of how many dishes there is not an easy task because there's a lot of things that they must um, consider before selecting. So now. You are in a in a, like a dilemma. Hey, is is should I give? Uh, is this higher order? Is this not higher order? And that okay. 
just to let you know that Bloom's taxonomy, yes, used widely, okay, used widely, uh, is okay, one of the best, I would agree. But there are others, other, other, uh, what I call it, frameworks about higher order thinking. OK, so I'm definitely I'm sure all of you all will agree with me, even though I use the word, the keyword select here. This is not a lower order question. It is a higher order questions because students must look and compare, contrast and all that. It's almost like an analysis question. And then later they need to provide their justification. OK, I just want to I mean, I'm not going to go into details today because we only have two, two hours and I'm already going over the two hours. There are many different frameworks, OK? And these six facets of understanding, you Google it, you see, OK? Wiggins and McTigger said that for a question to be considered higher order, OK, those questions must ask students to explain, must ask students to interpret, must ask students to apply, must ask students to give perspective, must ask students to do some sort of self-knowledge or self-assessment, and also show some empathy. If students can do this, OK, or if you're, you create the task where students can do this, then it can be considered higher order. So all of this explanation, interpretation, application, all this, they call the six facets of understanding. If students truly understand your work, they are able to answer higher order thinking questions if they can explain, interpret, apply, uh, application, empathy, self asset, self knowledge, and perspective. So here, explanation is becomes higher order, okay, and even application or perspective becomes higher order. So if you look back again, okay, recognizing a pattern, okay, uh, seeing making inferences, application, it becomes important. So actually this question here, when you talk about select, we are actually looking at this taxonomy. OK, and justification is we are asking them to give an explanation. So sometimes don't get so caught up with Bloom's taxonomy. Look at the context of the look at the context of the um, the 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 question. OK, what is it that you are asking your students to do? OK, so there are many different types of uh, uh, frameworks. OK, so if you're talking about six facets of understanding, then you might want to set you might want to give a question like this. You are having a tea party. One of your friends is lactose intolerance. Describe three, three items that you plan to serve. So that's application, because if you know their lactose intolerance, what things that you must avoid. OK, and then they ask you to explain why you chosen these three items. So you say it's a tea party, so you're not going to have chicken curry or whatever it is. Give your explanation. And then you, you can also ask them, OK, compare your menu with a peer. So this is where you talk about, you know, your task transfer goal, where making students autonomous uh, or even self-knowledge. OK, discuss the strengths and weaknesses of your menu. So now when you compare with your friends, what is so wrong about yours? So students must come up with an understanding what is right or what is wrong with theirs. OK, so I just want to let you know that there are other taxonomies or framework that you can use words like select. OK, of course, list. I mean, yeah, list seems to be lower order, lah, but sometimes select with a picture, it becomes a higher order question. OK, and of course, there's just not there's also depth of knowledge. OK, where there are four levels and level three and four, but this is uh, kind of mirroring Bloom's taxonomy. So there are different types, so it's not only just Bloom's taxonomy. There are others as well. OK, OK, I'm going to stop here for a while because I think the next one. Yeah, I'm going to stop here for a while. Um, anyone wants to ask me any question? Uh, let me see, how do I stop sharing? Huh? OK, anyone want to ask me any questions? No um, questions. Just, just yes, somebody. About yeah. Dr. Renaka. Yes. In the Bloom's taxonomy, I believe select is also in like C3 or 4 or something like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
See, uh, yes, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes, but when we looked at that Bloom's taxonomy, it was under understanding. Yeah, but there's another select at the at the top, near the top. Okay, higher level. Okay, yeah. so what I'm trying to say is sometimes don't get so, uh, you know, like, oh, is this, oh, I see select here, or I see list here, or whatever it is. Look at the context of your one, and also compare it with their others. Because when we looked at, when I looked at the, um, our syllabus, form five syllabus, the whole topic was explain, explain, explain. I said, hey, explain is actually under understanding. How come uh, they explain? But then when you look at the context, when they ask students to explain, it's actually higher order. So you have to understand as an expert, as a, as a content matter expert, that, okay, this question is higher order or lower order. Okay? Okay. Um, anybody wants to ask any other questions? Uh, I think I have some questions here. Uh, is it transferring knowledge? Why saying, is it sufficient that RGPT can do it to decide this? What does that mean? Uh, I think just now Prof Suba asked that question when you asked the question about the uh, converting it into infographic. Uh -huh. Because okay. before before you mentioned about the infographic, there was something about transferring knowledge. Oh, okay, so I think, okay. I think she was leveraging on that. If Prof Suba wants okay. to add on, Prof Suba is here. I don't know. Yeah, I think she has given us the answer, right? Prof. Shubha has given us the answer, not only just design and simplify, but just to challenge how to summarize. Yeah, this is what most of our students can do. Even now, school children have to do. Actually, it's not simple, you know, to, to, to summarize things, especially when you have a long passage and just putting it into one or two words. It is quite difficult. That's why I think the, the, the three minutes thesis is a very challenging uh, uh, component because you need to 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 summarize what you have done for and and those are the types of questions that you possibly can get so when you are doing exam questions try to look and put real life situations mean you know if you're going shopping you suddenly see a situation uh, you say oh yeah i can create this as a as a lesson or as a task for my students okay okay so i'm going to stop here for a short while i'll give you all a 10 minutes break so can we come back at 10 10 Okay, sure. Okay, okay then.
Okay, uh, welcome back. It's already 10.10. Okay, so if we finish early, we can leave earlier. Is everyone back or oh, coming back? Uh, most of them are here. Okay, so I can just continue. Okay, so so far I'm just giving you some uh, examples. Okay, some like real world examples of how you can don't have to modify your questions. I mean, don't have to 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 revamp your questions. It's just about adding a little bit more of challenge so that students can think in a, in a different manner. Okay, and um, but that is just that is just not it. Okay, there's a lot of things when you want to prepare higher order thinking skills questions. There's a lot of things that you need to consider. OK, uh, we are using the performance task. It means higher order questions. Lah. It needs to be aligned with your learning outcomes. OK, and I have bold that and made it bigger. OK, because uh, if I can make it blink, blink it be better, but I, I can't do that. <laughs> OK, I don't know how to do that, but this is a very, very important point. It has to align with your learning outcomes. Otherwise, it becomes useless or redundant. OK, I will show you later in your next slides. Of course, it requires extended thinking. And if you want to make it authentic, as I said, simple things, just asking a friend of yours to sit in the classroom, it's already making it authentic because students, when they present it, and when 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 another expert actually gives them feedback, that 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 gives them a new way of looking at things. Okay. And it of course requires explanation. You can include a rubric. OK, normally higher order thinking you because students can can get straight very fast. So you need to have them a rubric or what to or criteria to tie them to the task. OK, instructions for students must be clear. It has to be feasible. I know sometimes setting the questions you like, oh, I want them to do this, 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 this. But you have to be careful because students fatigue will take place. Then they will just cut and paste. OK, so if your task is extremely challenging, don't make it as an individual work. Make it as a group one. Then you know that, OK, even though this is very challenging, but it's divided among four of them or five of them. So it's it's OK. It's still manageable. OK, it is flexible in the sense that it doesn't have to be uh, just presentation. You can also show it as a role play. You can do a lot of other things and if possible, try to put technology. In. OK, so even if you're doing like a test exam test paper, which is uh, what uh, which is um, like open book or take home test, you can have technology and do that. OK, OK, I'm going to go to this first point, what it means by learning outcomes. OK, OK, when you want to design authentic performance tasks, OK, we always say in education, use the backward design. OK, backward design means you always begin with your learning goals. That means what is it that you want to achieve? That means if you are going to teach next semester a course, OK, look at the performer, performer, look at the learning outcomes, look at it, look at it every day and say, OK, what is it that if this is my learning outcome, what is it that my students will be able to do? OK, it's so important for you to look at your learning outcome so that you do not overstep or under uh, undermine your learning outcomes. OK, so why is it? Because the goals will help you with the development of the task. And the goals will also serve as a criteria to use in evaluating or assessing the task. OK, two things. If you understand your goals very well, that means what is your learning outcomes very, very well, you will know what type of task to prepare. OK, I will not be able to tell you because I am not an expert in your field unless you are in my field. OK, I can give you some ideas, but I will not be able to. It will not be like 100 percent spot on. OK, so even before when you know you're going to teach a course, when as soon as you get your performer, look at the learning outcomes and start thinking what kind of questions can I ask my students so that if they can demonstrate ta 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 or they can answer ta 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 ta, I know that they have achieved my learning outcome. OK, I'll show you very clearly what it means. Uh, this book. OK, this book is actually uh, uh, I don't know when it, it came out 2020, I think or 2019, which is a very good book for um, all these things that I have taken it. Most of it came from here. It is actually for primary schools, but I think it can be used at any level. OK, OK, 
remember the question that we were all talking about. The student wanted to know why photosynthesis is important. The student asked chat GPT the question. OK, so you know the learning outcome was about photosynthesis. OK, now let's say your learning outcome is students must. Uh, OK, students have to uh, uh, what this uh, explain photosynthesis. OK, so you gave them this task, this task. OK, let's say one teacher or one lecturer. OK, say these are the criteria that I'm going to evaluate this task. All the information is transferred accurately, so that means now they put it into an infographic, but the crucial information is put in and they are put in it accurately. The important information is written prom uh, prominently. That means the things that you really important, like the, the oxygen is important. I want to see the word oxygen sticking out. That's why photosynthesis is very important or blah, blah, blah. You might want to give them 20 marks. Language use was suitable for primary school. Let's say lah, you want to say because it's an infographic for primary school exhibition, so you don't want them to use major jargons and make it very complicated. And the ap appearance of infographic, you give them 10 marks. OK, another lecturer okay, said that, OK, all information is transferred accurately. I give 20 marks. Important information is written from uh, prominently. I give 20 marks. Language use was suitable for primary school. I give 20 marks. Appearance of infographic. I give 20 because students spend a lot of time doing the infographic, so I should give them marks there. And then the wow factor of infographic. This one actually don't know what to write, so I just wrote that last 20 marks. OK, now look carefully. Let's say for lecturer A, OK, when when he or she marks the questions, OK, they find that, OK, the student has transferred all the information correctly, tick, 60 marks. They put all the information uh, prominently, tick, 80 marks. But they didn't use the language so well, so you, only, you gave them zero here. And the infographic was there, but maybe not so good. You didn't have not so happy. Let's say you even gave that also zero marks. This student would have got 80 marks, which is an A. OK, let's say here. Your lecturer B, your marking criteria. Remember your learning outcome. Your learning outcome is students must understand or explain photosynthesis. Let's say the student transferred all the information accurately. 20 marks full. Info important information is written uh, prominently. Full marks. OK. Then language use was not suitable. Say zero information infographic zero wow factor zero they didn't do they did a lousy infographic okay but this student will only get 40 marks and it's considered a fail but the learning outcome is do they understand they are able to explain the process of photosynthesis okay or the importance of photosynthesis the students are able to do that yet you fail them because your marking scheme is not right for your hots. So even though both the lecturers prepared the same identical uh, higher order thinking skills, which was aligned with the learning outcomes of why uh, students are able to explain why photosynthesis is important, you must also remember that your marking scheme must be correct. If it's not correct, then you might be punishing students who are who have actually achieved the learning outcome or Students who have not achieved the learning outcome, you might be passing them. For example, uh, let's say if this student didn't do this one and two, they don't know how to transfer the information accurately. They don't know whether the information is correct. OK, they got zero here, but they did. They used very good language and they appear in the information where you give them 20 marks. OK. So this student will fail, whereas here, even if this they get zero, they still get 60 marks. They still pass the course, but they don't know anything about photosynthesis. So when you set your exam question, you not just look at the, the task itself. You have to look at how you are marking. Are you really aligning your task and your assessment to the learning outcomes? Otherwise, we are going to be in a very dangerous situation where we are actually letting students pass when they have not actually achieved their learning outcome.
because your 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 learning outcome, I mean your assessment criteria is not correct. Okay, so in this case, if the students get this correctly, okay, you will say, okay, what additional 20 marks here? 20 marks here could be, you know, you have the soft skills like communication skills or, or, or something like that. Okay, some people are very tough. They say, in fact, this one, you shouldn't give them any marks because this is not your learning outcome. But I don't believe in that because thus students do put in some effort. So we have to give them a small percentage, but not to the point where the percentage actually allows them to fail, even though they got the idea correctly. Okay, I hope you all understand what I'm trying to say here. Okay, Umu, any questions? Anybody wants to ask me any questions? Just say it out loud so it'll be easier. I assume no. Huh? Um, you, no question in the chat. you have a question. No, no question. question in the chat. Yeah. OK, so you understand what I'm trying to say. Even though you prepare a higher order thinking task, which is aligned to your learning outcomes, but how you assess them, how you give them marks is equally important. You have to pay attention to it. OK, because sometimes you might be punishing students who actually achieve the learning outcome because of your criteria that you have earned them. But that is another topic altogether. OK, OK, let's say now we're going to role play. OK, I want to show you how you can do your your um, your learning outcome. Remember the backward design when you have a backward design. OK, always look at your course learning outcomes. OK, let's say now your course is pizza making. You are teaching lah. I would say I like food because food is everybody know what a pizza is, right? So roughly lah, OK, roughly. Let's say at the course, at, the, at this learning outcome for this course is they need to list the ingredients and they need to create pizzas for to serve customers needs. OK, so straight away, I mean like all of us here know, OK, the learning outcome one is more of a higher, lower order one, but the second one is higher order, OK? So when so when we have a question like create it's it is higher order so normally when it's higher order it's not like it's, it's not like a lateral thinking you do a you can get b you have to do a few things in order to achieve what you are what, okay so this is what we call it as your criteria success criteria if students want to achieve this create pizzas to serve customers needs they need at least to be able to make the the pizza dough fluffy they must be able to make various pizza sauces. They must be able to put toppings and they must be able to bake the, the pizza. So that means when they want to create the pizza, the fundamental skills that they need or knowledge that they need are these five. That means for in order for them to achieve this learning outcome, you as a lecturer can actually help to break it down for them. When you break it down for them, these become the criteria for you to evaluate that learning higher or the higher order thinking task because you know that roughly your task must include marks for this because this will actually contribute to the learning outcome for the second learning outcome if you use the backward design so first look at your learning outcome if it's a lower order learning outcome okay la, you no need to do this but if it's a higher order learning outcome you know that you cannot achieve that learning outcome in one lesson or two lessons there are a few less lessons you must at least have okay so for this case create pizzas to serve students needs is not you can't do it in one day you have to teach them first how to make a dough you have to teach them how to make sauce you have to teach them how to make the toppings you have to teach them how to bake so you write down this success criteria and you share this success criteria with your students. So students will know, OK, for this learning outcome, these are the steps that I need in order to learn. OK, and you can use this as the criteria when you prepare your higher order thinking task. For example, OK, like this. A customer comes into your pizza parlor. He wants to surprise his young son. OK, the word here, young uh, son with a pizza for his birthday. So this is their customer's needs. However, he wants to make the pizza himself at home. He asked for your help to create a pizza base that is fluffy, light, not too thick and to have a unique flavor. How would you help him and give justifications for your action? OK, so this could be one way of creating your higher order because you are putting them in real world situation 
You you did you didn't just say okay create for me or do for me a uh, a uh, uh, satay pizza. You didn't say that. You put them in a situation. Okay, you are a uh, you have a pizza parlor, so that means you know how to make pizza. Let's say you have a customer coming in. He has a young son and he wants to make a pizza for his birthday. However, he wants to make the pizza himself, so he wants you to help him create a pizza base. Okay, how would you help him and give justifications for your answer? So maybe this one is just an exam question. So I don't want to use all. I just want you to do the pizza base only. Remember, don't overwhelm the students. It might be just one exam question, which is half an hour. Okay, so why do you consider this hot? Can anybody tell me why is it that it's, this is considered a hot question? Or oh, it's not a hot question. Liana? Is Liana here or not? No. It's not, I call Farid a relief. Uh, no Huda? No Huda? Zainan? Wachia? Oh, it, it, it is hot, is I that? guess. Ashraf. Huh? Ashraf. Who is it? Ashraf. Ashraf. Okay, you want to answer. Okay. <laughs> okay, do you consider it a hot? I think so. Why? Because you have to have past and uh, past knowledge first. Okay. Then you have to apply it. So you have to have sort of a use your past uh, knowledge, apply it to this context and this framework because it says fluffy, light, not too thick, and have a unique flavor. So they have to mm -hmm. use their own past knowledge to suit mm -hmm. this framework. Then you have to justify your actions. OK, so you are giving them a, a real world situation. Correct. And you're also giving them like, OK, OK, it's it's a challenge. Lah. OK, this this father comes in, so he has to make a pizza by himself. So as you're making the dough, you're teaching him how to make the dough. You don't want you don't want him. You don't want to make it such a complicated way and you want to have a unique flavor. So what kind of unique flavor you want to have? So you might may say, OK, maybe the, the base is uh, sweet a bit or made of chocolate because it's a young child or something like that. So there are many ways you can interpret it and it is actually aligned with the learning outcome. OK, again, it's not everything because you must look also at your question. Remember, uh, wait, let me show you. Uh, um, remember, this is your we call it success criteria. OK, if this is your learning outcome, OK, students will only see this. The students imagine if you are going into a class and you don't know anything about it. OK, you as the lecturer, OK, you know, OK, I want, I, I need, if my students be, are able to create a pizza, they must be able to do this, 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 this. And normally we tell for schools, write it down in a format where students can understand. OK, maybe they don't understand how to make a dough fluffy, but after you teach them, you say, oh, OK, doctor dah buat ini. Then doctor bought slide. Oh, OK, doctor dah buat pizza. OK, then already work week for 12. You already topping already. They say, hey, doctor, dah minggu 12, kita belum lagi bake pizza. Ah, they can also catch you. Otherwise, they are in. Uh, have we reached our learning goals already or not? We don't know. But if you can do this, then students also have a benchmark. Oh, okay. First week we did this. Second, third, third week we did this. Uh, fifth week we did this. Or seventh week or tenth week we did this. Oh, okay. So this learning outcome has been. We have already done all the questions already. OK, so for your context, I mean, anything that you are doing, I mean, your learning outcome, you look at your learning outcome, maybe you don't know how to do it yourself, but you need to talk with your colleagues who are expert in that field. OK, know to what level and then write down this success criteria. When you write down this success criteria, it becomes good when you want to set your task. OK, so you say, OK, la, I already did all this in the 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 do. I didn't test them in the assignment, but I assigned in their classroom assignments. I tested this. So for my final exam, I want to do about this do. And that's why I had that question. You can justify your answers. OK, OK. OK, one way, OK, like just now the question there, one way of using is is grabs. Okay, I'm not going to go into detail with this, OK? I just want you to know that, OK, that there is this one where you can use this to build, design authentic tasks. So when we talk about authentic tasks, real world, so they have to like role play, 
Okay, put them in situations where they might face when they go to work. Okay, because we cannot assume that oh, what we are teaching them in the classroom, when they go out there, they will be able to do it. I know I can transfer their knowledge. You have to give them tasks where you are actually asking them to role play. And you have to assess those tasks well to see whether your students have achieved the learning outcome. Okay, so if you look at this graph, Google it. Okay, you, you have the goal. Okay, so you tell your students what is the task about. Okay, so in that just now earlier task is you need to help a father to prepare a fluffy base or something like that. What is your role? Your role was you were a, a owner of a pizza parlor. Who are your audience? Okay, your client is a young a father to a young son who's going to celebrate his birthday. Situation, you are going to teach the father how to make a pizza, okay, a pizza, uh, a pizza base that is fluffy, young, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and what is your product? The parent is able to create that thing, the base, okay, and your success. And the, the standards and the success for criteria are ah, this criteria for success. Here is where you write down what you want your students to do in the one without giving too much of information. OK, for example, I did one for something else. OK, like this. The goal. OK, the goal is to give a report to your school principal about the water wastage and how to reduce this wastage. Your role. What is your role? You are the president of the science club in your school. Who are your audience? Your audience are the teacher, the school principal and teachers. What is your situation? Your situation is that your school water bill has been constantly increasing every month for the past six months. You need to write a report to explain the main water wastage, give suggestions on how to reduce the water consumption and have your school move towards becoming a green school. So this is what you need to have in your report. So what is your standards? The clear procedure, that means in your report, you need to write the procedure. How did you investigate the usage of each aspect of water consumption? Show how you calculated the volume of water use. You're not telling them anything, okay? You're not telling them how to calculate. So they have to go and figure out how to calculate and all that. But you know that if you want to do your report well, this information must be there. Your report suggests efficient ways of reducing water consumptions. OK, with reliable sources on how sustainable these methods are. That means you can tell them, OK, you can do this. And I got this from this source, from this source. So students know they have to go look for sources that can help them. And also a brief explanation of how you can envision your school being green. So there must be somewhere in the report about how they can move their school forward to being green. What are the suggestions that they could have? So this is considered a higher order thinking. Because remember, for the first one, transfer. When you want them to transfer, you must put them in situations where they are likely to be faced when they go into the working environment. OK, I'm not going to go through. I don't know. Um, okay. I don't know. OK. So if you look at that, actually, if you, you go into the Internet, you can see a lot. OK, they show you examples. Where am I? OK, they show you examples like, OK, this is just like a framework for you to help you to create your questions so that you put them in real life situations. So it can be an exam paper, final exam paper, or it can be an assignment, like project based assignment where they might take a longer time. OK, so who's your audience? What is your situation? What is your product? What is your standard? So what you need your students to do in order for them to to be successful. OK, so these are examples that OK, you are the audience, the group of nine foreign visitors. OK, what is your situation? What is the product? OK, you need to do a tour itinerary, blah, blah, blah. OK, what you need to include, all these things you need to include. So if you want your work to be successful, these are the things you need to include. OK, so and also they give you various roles that you can ask your students to play. So OK. You can ask them to be an author. You can ask them to be a friend. You can ask them to be an intern. You can ask them to be a social scientist, a scientist. Okay, imagine you are a scientist, or whatever it is. Okay, 
a taxi driver, whatever it is, and what kind of performance you want them. You want them to create an ad advertisement, you want them to create an essay, you want them to have a debate, you want to have, you know, a cartoon, okay, or drawing, or whatever it is. So there are many ways you can play with this and create various types of uh, one based on your learning outcome. Again, you have to be very careful because many of us get carried away when we have this kind of task. Okay. Uh, how do I go back to my... Okay, so a thinking moment here. Identify the various aspects of rest based on this given task and explain how you may want to improve this task. Okay, I don't think I'm going to go through this, but I think uh, if you look at this one, the important thing is when you kind when you give students this kind of questions, I think you need to a certain extent. Uh, if it's not uh, if it's not a uh, uh, final year exam paper, whatever it is, it'll be good to attach a rubric or the criteria that you are looking for. Don't give them marks. Give them the criteria. OK, if I'm looking for uh, investigation of water pollution using uh, methods that are cheap and reliable, but accurate or whatever it is. So the students know when they are looking for how to investigate this, they must look. They can look for various ways of investigating, maybe using uh, what dash dash. There's so many different methods, but they must look for uh, methods that are maybe sustainable or clean or cheap or whatever it is, you know, to to what? OK. OK, so this is another way of asking higher order thinking questions. So even in your classroom, when you're having discussion with them or when you are helping to scaffold them, you can ask this kind of questions. So it doesn't have to be in an exam. It doesn't have to be in an assignment task. It can be during classroom. You can ask them, OK, how well did you design? Why did you choose this method? Tell me. OK, these are all higher order questions. If students can answer you and help you explain, maybe at the beginning they are shy, shy, but later on explain why. If even if they say like, okay, if you ask them how well is your design, okay, so they say, oh, my design is very well. Why do you say my design is your design is very well? Uptake the answer. You say, oh, my design is very well because the the component of this is la 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 la. So you say, okay, you say la 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 la. Why do you think it's so important? So you, that's how you help them to increase their higher order thinking questions. So you can even ask higher order thinking questions when you are in the classroom and when we're having discussion during support, uh, you know, giving them the support and all that. So you can ask them questions like this as one of their success criteria. If they can answer it well, that means, OK, your one has been. So remember, higher order thinking is just not about designing the task. That's one thing. Second thing is also how you are going to assess the students. Make sure the criteria that you are going to assess the students will. That means the students are can do all those criteria as well. They must be able to get good marks. They might not get 100, but they must be able to get at least an A. Okay. Otherwise, there must be there could be some flaw in your uh, marking scheme. And once there's a misalignment between a learning outcome, however good your task is, or however, maybe your task is not good, but your marking scheme is good, or your marking scheme is good, but your task is not good, you are going to have a problem. Okay? Okay, so that's all I'm going to say today. Okay? Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me. Stop sharing. Okay. Any questions? Yes, can we get your slides and the recording of this video? That, that's a question for Umu. Yeah, yes, it will be shared uh, shortly after this. Okay, who was it that Thank asked you, for the Umu. slide? Oh, uh, Asra. Uh, why do you need the slides, Asra? Just, just a question. How are you I thinking? Need, I need the grasp. The we are graph. supposed, yeah, we are supposed to submit our vetting for final examination this week so i would the graph okay. would be quite very uh useful okay okay but you you google now and see there are plenty of it in the in in the internet i trust yours <laughs> okay anybody else wants to ask okay let's just go for a short sharing uh question i mean one like okay how do you think that um after going through this two hours with me letting you know a little bit of what that okay I, I was doing this before but now I think I want to do this just a short statement 
Anybody who wants to just start off first? Like anybody uh, has been doing using this? Can I? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so I'm going for a, an open book exam for my course. Okay. So I'm planning to use uh, like the, the, the grass method to, to, you know, put it in a context so that the final exam is higher thinking, give them a situation. Um, OK, how would then you use your prior knowledge to solve this issue or something like this? Okay, so just just a, another word of caution. Make sure your marking scheme is aligned with your learning outcome. Remember your criteria A and criteria B. Both of them set the same exam question, which is good because it is aligned with the learning outcome, which is the, why is photosynthesis important. But the lecturer A has prepared a criteria that is aligned with the learning outcome. That means if the student by marking the student's work, she has given if the students can answer can answer about why photosynthesis is important, they get an A. Whereas the second one, because the marking scheme is slightly off. Even if the students get the first two, the, the, they manage to transfer the information accurately and they show the important information prominently, they only still get 40 marks, which means they already failed. OK, so uh, because maybe they are infographic, you must remember infographic is not your learning outcome. It's just a means of of uh, producing the information, of communicating that information to, to others. But you can always tell your students that, OK, I'm giving a small percentage of it because, uh, you know, for your hard work, because it's not easy to, to come up with an infographic. It's not easy to come up with the design of an infographic. OK, so sometimes we we actually give the, the students a few marks, but it cannot overwhelm. The marks cannot be more than the learning outcome. So which one? OK, uh, how do I look okay, at it? Okay, OK, uh, let me see. Chat. OK. Yeah, to assign marks to hot questions. Again, to assign marks for hot questions, you have to be an expert. So you know what is important that you want them because you have to align it with your learning outcome. So as an, an expert in your field, you will know, OK, you know, like that's now the pizza. If I give you, if I say, if I give you a word like now, uh, Zonglong, what are the criteria to reach Zonglong? Because you don't understand that term, you don't know what is the criteria that match it. That's why I'm very scared to give people, oh, let me help you with your with your your hot question because I'm not an expert in your field. So I really know what should be emphasized. But if you can get experts, I mean, like your 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 colleagues to sit down and say, OK, what is the criteria for me to achieve this? You know, like for making pizza, for me to make pizza it, it's not I can't do it in one day. I still need to make the dough. I still need to teach them how to make the, you know, so you list it down. Because even my, my pre-service teachers, I make them list it down. OK, if you want to teach about rate of reaction, OK, the first learning outcome is what? OK, how do you break it down? OK, you learn about homologous series. OK, what are the homologous series that you want to teach them? How far you want to teach them? What you want to teach them? So you have to write it down that way. OK. Thanks, Prof. Shuba, for your. Yeah, so I mean, we can we can discuss it if you want. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else wants to share? Or should Doctor, I just on? Ah, somebody wants uh, to I would like, like to ask a question okay. about the success criteria, as you mentioned uh -huh. before, in grads. Okay, uh, I think maybe uh, for assignment, we can tell uh, or mention uh, to student about what is the success criteria that they have to uh, met uh, for their assignment. But how is it uh, for examination question? Sometimes uh, lecturers tend to ask, you know, question like, Discuss the opinion of the scholars regarding this matter and then uh, give your opinion uh, how to solve the current uh, situation uh, with the uh, like that. But actually, okay. uh, when uh, <laughs> the lecturer give the question like that, actually they also uh, uh, upper, they also want the student to give example and you know compare, but it is not mentioned in the exam question. So maybe the student don't get the idea, so they, mm. they will lose mark. So do you suggesting that if we are uh, uh, upper, referring to graphs, in the exam question, we also have to state clearly what is the success criteria or what do we want from the question? Yeah, you can put what they want at the end of it in your, in your answer or in your report. Please include 
examples and whatever, whatever. Close bracket. Okay, and so is this it wrong actually? If we don't say, uh, please give example, please compare, please. Uh, I mean, it would be good because then you, if it's really very open ended, so you know, like sometimes if if I ask you write an essay about me, okay, about me, what are you going to write about me? Are you going to write about my physical appearance? Are you going to write about my knowledge? Are you going to re re uh, write about your friendship with me? So there's a lot of things, right? So students also, when you give an in, a question which you feel is too open-ended, but you want them to focus on certain things or you want them to give examples. So you can say, okay, please provide uh, adequate examples or please provide examples after or something like that. Because you're not, you're not actually uh, giving them any answers, but you're just guiding them. You're telling them for you to be successful uh, or for you need to have examples. Because it's, if a student can write an essay without any examples, but in your criteria, you want them to give an example. Could be because your learning outcomes, this, you know, requires them to give examples to show the connection between theory and practical or something like that. So it's not wrong if you put one sentence at the bottom and say, please include examples for every point given or something like that. Please in include relevant examples. Full stop. So students know that they have to provide examples. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And mm -hmm. maybe I, I want to ask, uh, PDL problem listening, it is uh, considered hot. You can oh, yes, consider it hot because anything that you you are actually asking students to present, uh, if you can get a real life audience out there to come, I think to a certain extent it's hot already because if it's low order, it's just like list down. Why do you need an expert to come in? <laughs> you know, because there's already a set. So. Why I like experts or so I mean experts I, when you talk about experts, it doesn't have to be somebody like you know world class renowned or whatever. It could be just your colleague. If you are you let's say if you are an architect or you're an engineer, you have a friend who's actually an engineer working outside, you know, uh, in a, in an industry. So you want to connect that learning in the classroom with industry one. You can just call them in and say, okay, can we just meet us for one hour? The students are going to present or you ask the students to write a report or like what did I say, infographic and then pass it to this person. And I just ask him, hey, can you uh, or give a comment on their infographic? You know, just 10, 15 minutes, just come into the class so that they get, oh, from a world, it, it's the activity itself, la, the activity itself. Because sometimes the activity is hot, but if it's not aligned with your learning outcome, uh, then it is not. Some teachers uh, or so some lectures will give you that kind of this high order thinking in an assignment and they give the same question, very similar question in the final exam. So expecting the complete transfer like that. Then you miss out on the changing, putting it to a new context. So then that question, even though it looks like a higher order question in the exam question, but actually it's not a higher order question because the students have already done it as an assignment in the same context. So, so there's a lot of variables that you have to look for. So I know it's very challenging, okay, because sometimes when I look at my assignments, when I look at my uh, rubrics that I've given my students, uh, rubrics is another criteria that you can use, okay, which is very good. I mean, I've always used that. Those are actually success criteria. You can have a rubric, attach your rubric to your task, especially if it's not uh, a final exam, okay, you can attach it to your task. So students can always look at the rubric and, you can use the rubric to have discussions with your students. That means as they are going on, let's say they've already run the, done the introduction, you can read the introduction and say, okay, now in the rubric, you are under uh, poor because you don't have this, this, this. Can you please move to the next level, which is fair? I don't want you to be excellent. I just want you to move to the next level, fair. So that are the conversations that you have with your students. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask Dr. Nikos comment. I am teaching a course on language varieties. One of recognizing. I've been using maps and also asking students to write the names. Um. I'm not, I'm not an expert. When you talk about language varieties, what do you mean, are we saying? Oh, hi, Dr. Renka. Sorry, yes. I uh, didn't on my mic just now because you, oh, you okay. were uh, answering the, the previous question. Can I just type in now? Uh, actually, the language varieties are uh, referring to dialects. OK, various dialects. Yeah. OK, uh, is this this is this learning outcome? 
a higher order because sometimes you know when you look at your learning outcome the first one might not be higher order at all yes it might be something which is just the fundamentals so you don't yes. have to set a higher order thinking normally the third second or third one is normally higher order yes yeah normally because the, yeah the second and uh. third one is asking students to analyze and also compare but mm. i'm just wondering can can i transform the the simple one to 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 higher order thinking just wondering let's say something like recognize is very basic and do not need the the high order thinking uh, level skills but just wondering is there any way to to twist it or to improve it to make it into more higher order thinking where the language varieties spoken recognizes the geographic locations so they just need to recognize that's all yes okay so if they just need to recognize uh, it looks for me like a low order kind of learning outcome Again, it up it's up to your the 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 word that you use because they just need to recognize it, right? So that means yes. do you have like a, a passage and then they have to discuss those passage like oh okay I think this one comes from this geographic no. one yeah. is it? No. Then they just have to say okay Indonesian this is the language Malaysia in northern one this this that's it. Yeah. Mm, because the learning outcome is you just need to recognize. Mm. Right, so, so I, yeah, it's just like my pizza one. If you say list, there's nothing much you can do about it. Okay, so unless you right. change the keywords to differentiate the or to to analyze the geographic location. So that means you can say, okay, why is this 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 region and this region have very similar language spoken? You know. Mm -hmm. Kind okay, of so thing. yeah, it means that maybe during the curriculum review, so I need to yes. relook at the the course learning outcome, the the word that I use. Yes, because now All you're right. just asking them to recognize. Yeah. So All right. it looks like, yeah, if I can recognize it, that, that my learning outcome has been achieved already. Yeah, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Dr. Rika. Okay, so it's a very big, long process. You have to look at the learning outcomes, you look, look at the assign, uh, assessment, and then you have to look at their teaching and learning. So you have to have the constructive alignment because it's not fair to your students if it's not aligned. Your, your, you, you, your, you say your learning outcome is this, but then you assess them on different things or you teach them on different things. Yeah, okay. thanks a lot. Okay, is there any other question? If there is not, I think I will end this session. And thank you so much for being with me for today and hey, spending uh, your morning with me. Okay, Dr. then. Dr. Rinka, is Yuli here? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Rinka. Okay. Who is that? Uh, is Yuli here? Uh, okay. Oh. Yeah, I just wonder, can we just email if in case along the way we find some, you know, some opinion or some advice if we have any uh, okay. problems okay so you want my email address is it, is it going to be okay for you uh yeah because sometimes uh, no you know, they are challenged away along the way so uh it's always how to convince a colleague as well especially when they are in the old school of thinking and um yeah there are few and, and in the way we design our questions we have quite limited uh, English is our primary language, our first language. So okay. we might have the idea, but as to how to translate it into a higher order, you know, it mm. needs some some command of the language. So okay. we are always used to list, describe, dis uh, yes. know, explain. So if if we just want to, you know, get it change, um, it would really require a lot of training. Uh, yeah. You can just actually just do it on some your own. So I, say, I just, yeah. that's why I say Try to compare with different boards. If you have like, okay, yeah. let's say you have a colleague in a university of Nottingham that does the same, very similar course. Just look at their questions and see what kind of end of year questions they're setting and how, you know, or you have a colleague somewhere. How is it similar? How is yours different from them? Is theirs better? Is yours better? You know, that kind of thing. So you can always start small. You know, you don't have to include everyone. I don't know because maybe if you're if you're teaching just a course, you are the only sole lecturer, then it's easier to have control. But if you are teaching where you know multiple lecturers, then then there might be some issues, lah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are. Uh, I'm from Madison, so we do not have a course per se. Uh, okay. We, we, our question, you know, we combine everybody's question into one paper. Okay. Uh, so that's that's a bit of a challenge in that sense. Um, uh, yeah. I know, I know. There's a lot of challenges. <laughs> yeah. So let's yeah. start small and see how it goes. Okay. Uh, I, okay, thank you very much. Okay, then. Okay, everyone. So, bye.
and uh, thanks for your class. Yeah. Okay, so just go back and reflect and think. Okay, how am I going to improve it? So I saw I know Ashraf is going to do something new this time. Okay, so okay then. Bye bye. Hopefully I don't stumble. <laughs> no, no, email me if you have any problem. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. No worries, but just let me.